Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we are going to do part three of a three-part series on double angles. And we're going to look at, in this video, how to solve with double angle formulas. So, here we go. Solving with the double angle formula, sine of 2x. So we have sine of 2x plus sine of x is equal to zero. Well, we have a slight problem right here. One of our sine, sine values has a double angle and one does not. So what we've got to do is we have to pull from our knowledge what we know about double angles. So I'm going to pull up here our formulas. Okay, a double angle for sine, sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. So I can rewrite that double angle as a single angle. So I'm going to substitute in 2 sine x cosine x. So I have 2 sine x times cosine x for my double angle. And then I'm just going to bring down plus sine x equals 0. So all I've done is a substitution for my double angle formula. Now I need to solve this. So the best way to solve this is just look at this one factors. Okay, so I have a common factor of sine x. So I'm gonna factor out a sine x and that leaves me with two cosine x plus one. Now, if you're unsure about factoring, you just find your common factor. You divide each term by that factor and then you can check by make, distributing it back in and you should get the previous step. Okay, once you get to here, then this is all, all the way factored all the way. So you're gonna set each factor equal to zero. So you're gonna set sine x equal to zero because it's just a monomial, a term in the front. And then you're gonna set the binomial to cosine x plus one equal to zero. So set each factor equal to zero. And then we're looking at the interval zero to two pi. So let's find all values on the unit circle from zero to two pi where x uh, sine x is zero. Well, sine x is zero in two positions, at zero and at pi. Okay, now let's solve the second one. So to solve this one, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So move the 1 to the other side and then divide by 2. So we've got to find where is cosine x equal to negative 1 half. Okay, cosine is negative 1 half. It's negative in quadrants 2 and quadrant 3. Cosine is negative one-half at this position and this position. So that is at two pi-thirds, right? That's the first solution. And then at four pi-thirds. So the two answers for this factor would be two pi-thirds and four pi-thirds. So this problem, this equation has three solutions. It's got two pi thirds and four pi thirds, and I'm sorry, two more, zero and pi. So this actually has four solutions. Now, <clears throat> let's look at this one. Cosine, or solving a cosine of a double angle. So solve with cosine of 2x. So again, we've got cosine of 2x is equal to cosine of 1x or a single angle plus 2. Well, you've got to think, hmm, what does cosine of 2x equal to? So let's bring up our formulas. Cosine of 2x actually has multiple forms. We can use this form. We, we use cosine squared plus sine squared or minus sine squared. We can use this form that has two cosine squared theta minus one, or we can use this third form, one minus two sine squared. Well, if I replace my double angle with this first one, I'm gonna have both sines and cosines. 
if I replace it with the second one, I will have a cosine squared, but at least it will match this cosine. And then if I replace it with the third one, it's gonna, it's not gonna help me because I have a sine squared and I have a cosine in my formula. So my choice is going to be this substitution. So I'm gonna plug in two cosine squared x minus one is equal to cosine x plus two. Now what we've done is we've got everything in terms of cosine at this point. One squared and that's okay. It just means we may do some factoring. Now let's get all of our terms on one side so we can get our equation equal to zero. So I'm gonna bring my two cosine squared x down. I'm gonna bring this cosine over, so minus cosine x. And then I'm gonna bring this two over, combine that with the negative one I have, so minus three, all equals zero. So you wanna get it equal to zero, and now let's try to factor it. Okay, I'm gonna factor this one, because I do have a quadratic. This is just a trinomial. So I know my first term is going to be 2 cosine x. And my first term over here is going to be cosine x because if I multiply these first two together, I get cos 2 cosine squared x. Now in the back, I have a minus 3. So I've got to put my minus 3 here and my plus 1 here because I know I have to factor this into a negative 3 and positive 1. And if I check my outer, that's positive two, my inner is negative three, and that gives me my negative one. So that, this is how this one's gonna factor. So now we've got it factored. Let's set each factor equal to zero. So where does cosine, two cosine x minus three, where is it zero? And where is cosine x plus one? equal to zero. So, whoops. so let's solve these two. Okay, I'm gonna add three, so I have two cosine x is equal to three. So where does cosine x equal three halves? Well, I hope you know that that doesn't exist. That's a DNE, so this portion of the factor does not have a solution. All of inverse cosine falls between negative one and one, so that's a DNE. And then cosine x equals negative one. Well, if we're looking on the interval zero to two pi, where does cosine equal negative one? And I hope you're familiar with the unit circle and you know that has to be at pi. So this equation has just one solution. So I've done a couple examples of double angle formulas with sine and cosine. If you have one with tangent, you're just gonna use your tangent equation, but you're just gonna set these up and solve them. So you're just using identities or substitution to solve double angles. I hope this video was helpful.